So hi everyone, this is Jastic here from the Achievement Squad, coming at you with a 100% walkthrough for the indie title Aspire, Ina's Tale. So before we go any further, there is a full spoiler warning in effect from this point onwards as I will show you every cutscene and dialogue section in the game, so you have been warned. There's a grand total of 13 achievements or trophies that you'll need to obtain along the way. It's going to take you roughly about one hour, 45 minutes to two hours to beat this game. It only requires one playthrough as well. Overall, it's not very difficult. It reminds me greatly of games like Limbo, Inside, uh, and Little Nightmares, but on the indie kind of scale. So without further ado, let's get this started and I will regroup with you after the first cutscene. Okay, so we have just woken up in the Knight's Fall area. Now, just to give you a bit of idea of the controls of the game, most of the time you'd be running left or right and jumping with the A button. X will allow you to interact with objects such as levers and switches. Um, but from here, pretty much at the start of this game, we just want to walk to the right to begin with. Now, I'm going to give you a heads up. There are two achievements that are orientated around dying. So there is one for the dungeon and one for the watcher at the end of the game. I will keep you posted when that time comes. So for the start of this piece, you just want to keep walking to the right and hopping up the ledges. You eventually come across these little beacons along the way. These are checkpoints, so like on Inside and Limbo, you can go back and load those up if something doesn't go to plan. So after this cutscene, jump onto the ladder on the right hand side, climb up and continue to the right. So we have reached our first kind of small puzzle uh, and we're going to come across this box here. Now hold X to interact with it and you just need to drag it to the right hand side as close to the wall as you can and it's going to be our stepping stone up on top of the boxes. Once you've done that climb on over and drop down the other side and continue right. So you come across ropes in the game, you can swing on these uh, as well, but for this one it's not necessary. But hop on, climb up and jump to the right and you're going to go through the tiny kind of little walkway. And you're going to bump into a box in this area and you want to push that as far right as possible and it is going to fall down onto the floor below. 
you'll want to keep moving that further to the right so that you can jump up onto the ladder above. Once you have that, you want to head up and continue to the right. And eventually you hit the section after looking at the weird blob in the thing where there is a rope. You want to climb up that rope and then to your left is a box. Pull that down to the bridge and it is going to break and give way. And then keep pushing the box to the right until you can climb up onto the ledge above. Once we're up, you want to throw the switch to the right of the checkpoint and that is going to open up the door. Continue through this door. Now as you come up to the top of this walkway, you're going to need to make a jump to the other side. And this is going to bag us our first achievement for clearing the gap in the Knight's Fall section. There's no going back for you now, you're going to have to go about getting the rest of the achievements or trophies in the game. But once you clear that jump, you'll pop your first. Now that the cutscene's over, we want to make our way across to the right hand side and we're going to see a rope hanging down above a hole. You'll want to jump over the first hole, jump to that one. And now to actually swing, just use left and right on your analog stick just to gain the momentum. Make sure that you have enough before you attempt to jump to the other side to avoid rolling down the hole. Once you've done that, you want to keep pushing to the right a little bit more and eventually you're going to come across uh, the exit out as well as many giant fallen knights uh, but keep moving to the right and then you want to head up through this section here that's going to teleport you into a crystal world once you're in there you just need to keep walking right to the very end So we're now going to enter a section called the dungeon once we're clear of this crystal area but I'm talking to you in advance to give you a bit of a heads up. There's an achievement that you must get through the dungeon without dying. Okay, That means any form of dying whatsoever, falling into water, anything that causes Aina to disappear counts as a death. Um, you cannot, you have to go from the very beginning of the dungeon again so if you die you'll need to reload your checkpoint back to the start of it and do the whole kind of area again right up until the point where you finish the actual dungeon itself yeah so don't die in this section if not you're going to be forced to reload so to reload a checkpoint you click on your start menu uh, and then you go down to load and you'll need to make sure you select the one i have here on the screen you cannot go back to checkpoints once you die you die and it remains counted once you've done this though, head over to the right and we are going to get this area kick-started. Don't worry though, I say about dying, it's not particularly hard. Um, yeah, just keep pushing forward. As you come into the section, you want to pull the block to the left and we're going to jump up onto the ledge and to the rope above. And we're going to go get that glowing canister. So 
So once you're at the top, you want to grab the glowing canister by holding down on X and walk to the left and drop down below. You'll need to pick up the canister again, but you need to walk to the right. So the, um, the spirit energy in here glows blue and it kills off any of the darkness stuff that's kind of blocking your way, but it also makes lifts and switches function. So drop your canister by the statue here that will open the gate up and you continue to the right. And we're going to be introduced to some people called the Joker and Thief. Now we need to follow specific dialogue options in this area to get an achievement. So when you speak to them, first of all, do not discuss the architect. They will talk about the architect, but you do not pick those dialogue options. You are looking for an exit, so you want to keep picking those ones. So for the first prompt, you want to choose a way out. You then want to pick the option at the bottom which says say you need to find the architect but we're not actually going to discuss the architect and they're going to tell you that you can exit right to so make your way to the right and you want to throw the lever here that's not going to open the door it's going to open up the door to the dungeon which is back into your left so make your way back and have another little bit of dialogue with the joker but do not jump down the hole straight away So now that you're back in control of Ina and you're by the Joker's cage, press X to ask some questions. And now you want to pick the option of the architect. And this is going to bag yourself a missable achievement. Okay, now that you've bagged yourself that one, drop down to the room below and we're going to pull the glowing block just here and we want to push that as far right as possible. As you come into the next area, you just want to drop down the rope and we want to swing across as far as possible to the left as we can go. And we want to continue to the left until we reach the next room. Once we're in this section, we want to push that block to the left as far as possible. Um, well, not all the way to the end, but it's till you've got enough room to jump over the top. Once you've done that, you want to hop over to the other side of the block and you want to push it to the right. And we want to push it kind of into the middle here, uh, just by the blue marking in the background. Head left and you want to drop down into this room. And as you come into this room, make your way to the right and you'll be able to climb up onto the ledge here and you'll be able to see a rope hanging from the ceiling. Jump onto that rope and swing across to the glowing box. Once 
Once you're up there, you want to pull the block to the right and then hop over and push it to the right so it falls off the edge. Once it's down at the bottom, we want to move the block left and in front of the gate. We're going to see the stone kind of thing. But when you put the light next to the stone, it causes the gate op to open up on the left hand side. So exit to the left. And we want to keep following this path as far left as possible. We're going to be introduced to something called beasts in this section as well. Okay, so for this next section, be ready to run because you are going to get chased by this thing. It reminds me of a Paramite from, from Abe's Odyssey in a weird kind of way. Anyway, you want to run to the left and you want to keep going to the left and it's going to keep coming after you. Stating the obvious here. Once you cross this bridge, it's going to fall down the hole. But don't stop moving. Uh, you want to keep heading to the left as I stop moving. Uh, and you want to jump over this hole. Now the guy is going to jump back up out of the hole. So you want to keep pushing to the left once he's back up. And as you get to the end of this section, you're going to discover that these guys do not like the bright energy lights and it's going to cause him to back off. Jump up through the gap and crawl to the left. Once you're done crawling, drop down to the very bottom. And we're actually now going to acquire an ability. So head to the right and we're going to grab a spirit, which is free floating. Spirits now can be passed into objects to light them up. Or you can extract them from objects and move them from different locations. So in this case, it's going to boot up the machine in the background. And I is going to go get the spirit energy. Uh, energy spirit from the stone and switch the machine off and we're going to use that for us to solve some puzzles So once you have this, let's go to the right. And as we come into the section, you'll see the stone just here. You want to press Y and that will insert the energy spirit and you'll go to the right and go through the door. So keep making your way to the right hand side. And we're going to enter this area with a block and two statues. So push the block to the right. We want to jump up and collect the energy spirit from above us. Once you have it, drop down and press Y and use it on the box. And then we want to pull the box to the left and we're going to place it in between the two statues and that is going to open up the gate on the left hand side and we want to continue to the left. As you come through this section, jump over the top of the obstacles in the way and once you reach the end of this room the ledge is going to break and you're going to fall all the way down. Once you've fallen down keep heading to the left and grab the spirit that's here and below you you're going to see another one of the beasts. So you can take a run and jump at this point to get yourself a bit more distance from him. Remember obviously we don't want to die here because that's not ideal. So jump down and we want to keep running to the left and we want to climb up on the statue stuff here uh, and keep heading to the left once we're at the top jump onto the rope and slide down and we're going to bait the creature across climb back up very quickly and then jump to the right and put your spirit into the stone that is on top of this ledge and that is going to trap the beast once you've done that you want to backtrack to the right from where he came from
Once that's over, head to the right and throw the switch. You're already heading to the right anyway. And we're going to go through the gate. Now that little purple beam there stops you from taking any spirits further forward. Um, but it doesn't do anything else but that. You want to keep taking your way to the right. And as you're coming to the next section, we're actually going to go after our first memory stone. So this is collectible number one of four for all of the game. Stand by the stone and you want to hold the Y button to pull the spirit out. And we're going to go to the right. And as we go to the right, you'll see a ledge that can be jumped up upon. Jump on this one and then you want to crawl through the gap. And as you're crawling through the gap, you're going to enter a very large room, uh, which has a poem on the wall, uh, which is readable once you've plugged in your stone. And that's going to get rid of the darkness. And then we will pick up the memory stone at the end just here. And that's going to pick up an achievement for finding the Joker's memories. Okay, so now that we have the collectible, head left and we want to grab our spirit energy out of the stone by holding down the Y. And we want to make our way to the left and we're going to go back into the room where we kicked this section off. And as you drop down into this area, we are going to take our spirit to the furthest left statue and we want to place it into there. Once you've done that, take the spirit back out of the statue and continue to the further left and place it to, into the container on the floor. Pick up the container and walk it to the left to cause the container from above to fall. And then backtrack to the right and place your container by the first statue. Go get the second container and then place it to the right of the other container by the second statue. And that's going to open up the floor below. Once you've done that, drop on down. Okay, so once we are back in control, we're going to make way to the right in our favorite direction. Uh, and we're going to come upon our first real tricky part where we can die quite easily. So the monster below is going to come after us. So we need to extract the spirit from the stone here. Uh, and we need to be very quick in this situation. So the moment you drop down, you need to run to the left. And we're going to need to place the spirit directly into the stone very quickly. You have to stand still for a split second and press Y for it to work. Try not to die here, otherwise you will need to have to go all the way back to the beginning of the dungeon to complete it. Make your way to the left and we want to hop up and grab the container. Take the container down and we want to place it next to the statue on the left hand side specifically. And then we want to extract the light from the stone and quickly place it into the container. Once you have that, you want to pick the container up off of the ground and we're going to use it to fend off the creature and it's going to push it backwards and f cause it to fall down the hole. Once you've done that you want to drop your container down and jump on over to the other side and we're going to continue to the right. We'll grab ourselves another checkpoint, climb on up and we're going to reach this top piece here where there are some of the beast statues. Okay, so we are on the next incredibly fiddly bit where it's easy to die. So we need to be sure that we swing across on these ropes as far as possible. Um, we can't drop down on the left because otherwise we'll get trapped by the creature and killed. So jump to the ledge on the right and then swing from the second rope to the third. The third rope is going to break, so you'll need to move quickly here uh, as the monster is going to come chasing after you. So once that's broken, push right as quickly as possible. You'll need to jump over the gap and then you're going to need to slide down the hill. Now as you slide down the hill, there is going to be a lift at the bottom that we need to jump onto. And then you need to immediately jump onto the chain and start climbing up straight away. Okay, 
Let's avoid getting caught again, uh, otherwise you have to restart it. Now make your way to the right and there's going to be a little bit of dialogue with Ina and one of the dead robots. So once you're back in control again, you want to make your way to the right and we're going to push the glowing crate to the right and that's going to open up the area on the right hand side and then we're going to pull it back to the little robot we were talking to a second ago. Once you've done that, you want to make your way to the right and we're going to grab the container that is on the shelf that we just opened up the doorway to. And we're going to take that back to the creature as well. And that is going to start up the machine. I believe it's called a flume. It looks more like a, a crab to me. But once that thing's booted up, we want to stay with it and follow it along. So once it's alive, you want to stay with it. If it stops, you might need to backtrack and go get it because um, it requires you to be nearish for it to keep moving. Um, but we're going to need it to clean out the areas that we can't get to because we don't have access to a spirit. Now, as we come into the section, we're going to grab our next collectible in the game. So we want to hop on over to the right hand side. Be careful not to fall here because if you drop down, you will die. Uh, so hop down, drop to the right and continue into this room and we're going to get our second memory stone which is the thief's memories and we're going to bag ourselves an achievement at the same time. Now that you have it, you want to exit to the room to the left and we're going to go up the ladder. And once you're at the top of the ladder, you want to go to the left a little bit because there is a spirit that we need the help of, as well as to trigger the uh, flume again for flying. And then we're going to keep following it to the right. So it's now going to run out of power. So we want to place our spirit into the gate doorway statue on the right hand side of it. We want to drag the block into this area and then we want to remove the spirit from the block and transfer it to the cube. Once it's in the cube we want to push the cube as far right as we possibly can. Once you've done that, we want to jump on top of the container and up to the top. And we want to go to the far left hand side. Uh, and we're going to find a, another spirit container. We want to move that to the far right as possible. You'll notice that we won't be able to jump up with it. But if you go to the right and drop it down here, climb back over. And we're going to go back down to our cube. Push the cube to the left hand side. And that's going to open up the gate below. And we're going to need to take out the spirit from the cube and we're going to transfer it to the right hand statue. Once you've done that you want to then move your block back to the right again and we're going to climb on up and we're going to grab our container from the top and drop it down at the bottom area. Once at the bottom, we want to push the crate to the left again, and we're going to move it as far to the left as possible. Um, we're going to also need to transfer the spirit back into the crate. Uh, there's no immediate rush for it, uh, but place it in, and that's going to keep the right door opened up. Grab your container, 
and then we want to bring it back over to the cube into this middle section then we want to keep moving the cube to the left and then through the gate and then just place the cube near to the crab as well as near to the statue at the same time make your way back and grab the container and then go place the container by the crab the creature and that's going to bring it back to life once you've done that you just want to stick with the crab and go to the right as far as you possibly can Once you've done that, you want to throw the switch to raise the lift up. Uh, and as you get to the top, you want to head to the left and you will need to watch a short cutscene. Now that the cutscene's over, we are going to keep going to the left, following our crab friend, and he's going to die out again. So we need to repower this guy up. So we're going to make our way up the ladder that is on the inside of this building, and jump over to the right and go up the next ladder. And at the very top, you're going to find a spirit on the left-hand side. We want to grab that one, and we want to come climb back down the first say the ladder that we just came up once you're down a level we want to press Y and drop our spirit on the statue on the right hand side we then want to climb back up the ladder and this time jump off to the left and we're going to grab the crate just here and bring it inside the uh, two pillars. Once you've done that, we want to drop back down to where the spirit was. And we'll be able to use the rope to swing across to the other side. And what we're going to need to do here is extract the spirit from the container on the left. So swing on over and pull that out. Once you have that, you want to jump to the right and we want to climb all the way up to the doorway again to up one more level and we're going to need to move the block to the left this time so we can get past one more time and then transfer the spirit into the container on the left just here that's going to remove the corruption that is here but you'll also be able to take your container down and we need to drop the container down to the floor below and we're going to go place that beside our crab friend Now that we have that, we want to make our way left and we want to climb up the ladder. We're going to jump over the gap and we're going to use the rope to swing across and get the other canister. We're going to use that other canister for the powering up of the robot. So we're going to give it a bit more kick. As you can see, my rope is out of reach, so I have to climb up and over the top. But once you're up, grab the canister and we're going to drop back down and go place that one next to our crab friend.
Once your man is back up and functional, we want to climb up to the very top of this building here. He's going to fly all the way up and he's going to meet you at the top. So climb up ladder on the left, jump over and get the ladder on the right. And once you're at the top, you want to move to the left. Now at this point in time, make sure you stay with the robot because you do not want to get killed by one of the beasts. He's going to fend the beast off, but he must stay by your side for this to work. So stay with him and follow him to the left. And the light given off by the crab is going to cause the creature to recoil in fear and eventually fall down the hole. Be careful not to fall down the same hole as you will not get your achievement if you do this. Now if you've been following along, this will be the exit to the dungeon and you're going to get the achievement, the things in the dark which is for getting out of the dungeon without dying. Once you've done that bit, you want to continue up to the very top of this slope and your crab friend is going to clear some more of the gunk out of the way to allow you to move forward. Follow him across the ledges to the left, so he's going to clear out the, the mess, allowing you to go forward. Continue to the far left and you're going to find a rope that you can climb up, so please do that. Once you're at the top, we're going to need to move the box out of the way, so pull it to the left and that's going to allow you to get past. And you want to continue to the right until you swing across to the other side and you meet up with your crab friend again. Climb up the rope and jump to the left and we're going to jump over the railings that are just ahead of us. And we're going to want to push the crate to the left again. That's going to be our stepping stone to get up to the guys at the top. I walk behind, away and leave it behind. Uh, but once you're up here, you want to climb up to the Joker and Feath. Once that's over, you want to head to the right and press X on the creature and it's going to trigger the door. Uh, once that door is open, you want to enter and you want to keep following it to the right uh, through the end of the crystal maze-like corridor, uh, but keep moving to the right until you get to the temple. That is the end of the dungeon section.
Okay, so we are now in the temple section. We are going to visit our new friend, the architect. This area is going to take roughly 25 minutes or so. It's split into three sections. So the temple is kind of like the main warp room, and then we go to two different areas. So let's kick this area off by going to the right. You're going to get some dialogue in the background from the architect before you've met her. Uh, but keep jumping over the gaps until you reach the architect. So once you reach the architect, there is no dialogue option that is going to change any of the outcomes or give you different achievements. So just exhaust the discussion until you're able to press forward uh, into the next area. Okay, so we now need to head into the Court of Effigies, so we want to make our way to the right. We're going to hop on up to the glowing purple blue door at the top here, and you want to press X to go through. Okay, so we are now in the Court of Effigies and we're going to go after a new spirit. So we want to start making our way to the right and jump across the ledges. And as we come down into this area, there is going to be a golden uh, like statue kind of thing ahead of us. Now you want to place Ina in front of that and she is going to extract the, uh, the effigy, uh, sorry, the spirit for movement, not the effigy, um, from the ledge below. It is the pink triangle spirit. So when you use the pink spirit in one of the ledges, it causes it to move and react. So we want to start off by heading our way over to the right. I'm going to enter this little puzzle room here. So place the spirit triangle, triangle spirit into the ledge on the left hand side. That is going to lift you up to the very top. And we're going to grab the second spirit from that side over here. So jump up and grab it. And then you want to make your way back down to the bottom. Now we've got a bit of a timing orientated puzzle with the door on the right hand side. We've got to stand next to the statue on the left uh, for this to work. So we want to start this off by placing the first triangle into the left platform. And then we want to place the second triangle into the right platform. And we're going to jump onto the left platform and ride it all the way up. Jump to the left and stand next to the statue to open the door on the fire side. Once it's fully open, we want to jump across the two ledges and escape and continue to the right. Okay. 
So for this section, place the triangle into the ledge and it's going to move left and right. You just want to stand by the doors and make sure that they're opened up, but keep hopping on and off the ledge as you need to, but make your way to the other side. Once you're on the other side, you want to continue to the right and we want to climb over the top of the statues and the pillars just here. Okay, so at the end we're going to grab ourselves a spirit, continue to the right, and we want to drop the spirit into the ledge below. Now, once that raises up, get off and go to the right, and we want to climb up the vine that is just here. And above you is a movable block. So once you are up and you jump over the top of that movable block, push it down to the right, drop down, and then you'll push that block to the left, just past the statue. It cannot be on top of or next to the statue as it blocks the ledge below. Then drop back down to the lift and you'll place the triangle back into the lift. Once you've done that quickly, you want to push the box back in front of the statue and that is going to block the ledge from falling down a bit further. Hop on that ledge and place the triangle back in and you'll be able to quickly jump up to the right at the top so you can proceed through to the next area. Okay, so we are now at probably one of the most fizzy, fiddliest puzzles in the game. Um, so we're going to start this one off by placing our spirit triangle into the left ledge, and that's going to send it upwards. And then on the middle ledge where the sword is kind of jabbed in, there is a switch that causes the platform just there to slide underneath the first platform, making way for the second. Once the first platform is dropped down and landed on top of that ledge, you want to drop it down and go to the platform on the right. And you want to place the triangle into here. Now that's going to send it up and you want to jump off quickly and go across to the first platform and send that up also. But then jump back up quickly and pull the switch to flip it over. The second ledge is going to fall down and you want to place the triangle back into the second ledge ride it up and then quickly jump up through the top right hand corner of this section this puzzle can be a little bit tricky at times keep making your way to the right And as we enter this section, we're going to go through a Flappy Bird-esque moment. So hop up to the next spirit, and we want to place the triangle into the top ledge above us. And then we just need to make sure that we're in the right place so that Ina does not crash with the red vines, causing her to fall into the water below. So do this till the very end of the section. Just don't get hit by the red leaves. When you are up, you want to continue to the right, and there are three pink statues, sorry, diamonds ahead of you. Uh, make your way across, and you're going to pick those up. There's going to be a cutscene, and you're going to repair the first part of the tower. Okay, so once we're done here, exit left. And we want to make our way back over to the architect and have a quick discussion with her.
So now we're going to need to go to the Arbitorium of Goliaths and to get there we head to the left and we use the ledge below by dropping in the spirit and we're going to enter the door on the right hand side. So for this one we just need to kick this off by heading to the right and eventually we are going to have a cutscene. So just walk right from here. So once that's over, we will then gain the ability to manipulate object size. We'll also gain ourselves an achievement at the same time. So we kick this one off by moving the block that is to the right of the section to the far right as possible. And then we want to jump on top and we want to place the green square inside and that is going to cause the size of the square to grow. And we want to climb up to the right and continue to head in our favorite direction. Now that we're down in this section, we want to throw the switch just ahead of us and it's going to cause a block to fall down from the sky. Push that block to the left and eventually you'll be able to jump up and grab the green spirit. So once you're in a good place, hop on up. Once you've done that, we want to push this block to the right as far as possible until it falls into a hole. Once we're over, drop the spirit in and it's going to cause the block to grow in size. Backtrack to the lever and pull it again and it's going to spit out a second block for us. And we want to push that block to the far right as possible. Once you've done that, make your way to the left and you want to grab the spirit from the block. And then we will go to the right and place it into the right block and that's going to allow us to climb up and get out of this section. So continue right as always. Okay so for the next puzzle we need to head to the right and we're going to grab the spirit and throw the switch at the same time. That's going to cause a block to drop down. We we'll then want to push the block ever so slightly to the left and we're going to press Y to close that up. Now we need to climb up and jump up through the gap before the door closes on us and then we want to pull the switch again. This will cause another block to drop in and we want to push that to the right next to the stone. It's going to open up the door below us. Head back to the left and throw the lever again and that is going to cancel out the stone below and it's going to release the spirit. So drop down and we want to head out to the right hand side of this section. For this part just swing your way across the other side and crawl through the tunnel on the other end.
And once we're here, we want to throw the switch and we're going to grab our first block. Push that block to the right and we're going to go over and we're going to jump on up to grab the green spirit that's at the top here. And we want to drop back down and we're going to move the block to the left underneath the block dropping system. Uh, I press Y here as well to put the spirit in just to make the rock a little bit bigger. Once you've done that, throw the switch and that's going to cause another block to drop down. Extract your green spirit again. And then you want to push the two blocks to the right as far as you can whilst they're stacked on top of each other. Put the green spirit in the bottom block again and then you want to push the top block into the room with the statue. Jump up and exit to the right. Climb up and continue to the right. Okay, so we're now going to grab our third memory stone. So do this by grabbing the spirit in the beginning and climb up the lead, the rope on the left and jump to the ledge on the right. And you want to throw the lever and that's going to spit one of the boxes out from the top. Drop down and you want to install the green spirit and that's going to cause it to grow. Climb back up to the left again and throw the switch at the top one more time. Grab the second block and then you want to push that to the right onto the ledge. And then you want to pull the green spirit out of the block below. Uh, and we want to transfer that green spirit into the second block to make it bigger. We're going to jump up into the roof where it's ever so slightly hidden. You want to climb up and then you want to head over to the left. And you will find memory stone number three for the architect. Okay, so now that we have this, we want to backtrack and we want to drop down. We'll bag ourselves the achievement at the same time. Order out of chaos. So fall down. And then you want to grab the green spirit out of the top box. We want to drop down to the box at the bottom. Move that to the right and we want to stand on top of it. Uh, and once you're stood on top of it, you want to put the green spirit back in. Grab the box at the top and move it to the right and place it between the two statues. Then you want to transfer the spirit out of the block below and you want to hop over and then transfer it into the top right block, block and exit to the right. Continue to the right. In this section you want to hop on over and you want to push the block that is on the shelf down to the bottom below and we want to push it keep further to the right. Uh, and we want to use that block to get up to the ropes at the top. Use those ropes to swing to the other side and when you get to the other side there will be a cutscene and you'll be returned back to the temple with the architect.
So once we've done that, we want to drop down to the right and we're going to speak to the architect and she's going to open the way ahead for us. We're going to now be going into the factory. The factory has a particular section where you cannot die by the hand of the boss in this area. So be careful. But once you're having that discussion with Marion, make your way to the right and we're going to exit out of the temple. Okay, so once the conversation's over, head to the right, we can grab our pink spirit and we want to extract the green spirit from the block just here. And we're going to have a block that now takes two different types of spirits. Stand on top of it, if you press the right bumper, you'll alternate the spirit that's about to go in. We want to place this pink spirit into the block and it's going to move it to the right. Jump on top of the block, wait for a second to make sure that you get the pink spirit out. Once you have it, jump up to the right and then place the pink spirit into the ledge here and we're going to push that block on the right hand side off of the ledge at the top once that's over push that block to the left and it's going to fall down into a hole and once it's fallen into the hole place the green spirit in that is going to open up the door on the right hand side you need to go through that door and there will be another crystal sequence where you just run to the right again uh, but it will take you through into a place called the factory which is probably the hardest level of the game but it's also the final level of the game now be wary as you're in the factory if the boss kills you with his attack you will need to replay from the first checkpoint inside the factory from start to finish otherwise you will avoid one of the achievements for completing the level the factory level without being killed by the boss okay so on to our next missable achievement and we are now in the factory we want to make our way to the right and we're going to bump into a character by the name of the guiding light in this section you just want to keep the picking the options of saying that you want to leave Okay, so once that's over, make your way to the right and you'll speak to him again. Be sure here to say that you want to leave. Don't really dig into any other dialogue, um, but the leaving statements are the ones that are going to get you the achievements. Uh, so pick the, f uh, the last option here. Where is the exit? Now you want to say time to leave. Once that's done, the guiding light is going to disappear off to the left. You want to follow him. Once that's over, you want to then pick the option My Responsibilities. Oh. 
Once that's over, you want to press X, and then it's going to pick up the options of asking more questions. Uh, and once that's appeared, we want to ask the question exit, and he's going to give a bit more dialogue. Once that's over, we want to exit out of the conversation with the guiding light, and that is going to bag ourselves a missable achievement uh, for talking about what's to come next. Okay, so drop down and we are going to head to the right and we are going to get this show on the road. We are going to be introduced to the watcher who is the boss. So this guy is the guy that we do not want to be seen by. It's like kind of a heart-like thing. And what happens when it attacks, it kind of wiggles a little bit and then it gives us a big explosion. The achievement is for only being killed by the boss. Uh, once he goes red and turns the area red, that's when he does damage to you. You have a few seconds to escape from it, uh, otherwise he will kill you off. If you die, you must restart altogether. So when he's not spiking up like this, you want to move over to the right and take cover behind the next thing. And he's going to shoot the attack off again. Do the same one more time. And you want to keep doing this as you're going to the right until you get to safety. Once you hit the section here, you're going to need to slide down and then you're going to jump up. And now it's going to get a bit close here. You're going to need to jump to the ledge in the middle. If you don't have enough time, jump to the ledge on the right just to buy yourself a bit more time. But you need to extract the triangle spirit from the ledge that is just here. Once you have that, drop down to the green below and you want to place the triangle spirit into the shield and that's going to cause it to move. Stay behind the green stuff as you're edging to the right, just so you stay out of the way of its attack. Once you're on the right hand side, there's a small little gap that you can squeeze into. Uh, and we want to crawl through here. It'll still continue to attack as you're going. Once you've made it out of the other side, you want to jump up to the top and we're going to extract the green square from the block at the top just here. That's going to cause it to shrink down and we want to push the box to the right and then it's going to fall off to the ledge below. Okay, so once you drop down, we want to keep edging the box to the right and then dipping back into cover on the left hand side. And we're going to use these shields that are in the middle just here with the conjunction with the green cube to make this green shield section. This will make moving the block across easier. But you need to keep moving the block as far to the right as possible. So just keep nudging it out. When you've got enough time, you will then need to grab the green square from the first shield and transfer it across to the second shield. Let's give you a bit more cover to move the block over to the other side. Okay, so once we're sure the block is on the other side, make sure you go back and grab the green spirit. And we're going to transfer that across into the block. That is going to allow us to get a little bit higher up. Once you're in, jump on up and go past your checkpoint. Now we need to jump up to the top just here. I slip and go a little bit too far. Uh, but jump up to the top right. And when it's safe to do so, you want to run across to the other side and extract the green from the block. So grab the green spirit and then place the green spirit in the shield in the middle. That's going to allow you for enough cover to push the block off the far left hand side. Now 
Now that that's removed, you want to grab from the shield in the middle both the green and pink spirits. So do that, and that's going to cause the shield to go away, but it's also going to cause the shield to go down one floor. Once it's down one floor, we want to drop down when it's safe to do so, and place the green spirit inside the shield that is now on the bottom floor. Once you've done that, we want to backtrack left and we're going to go grab the cube and we want to move across to the far right hand side. Once it's over, make your way back into the middle and you want to grab the green spirit from the shield. And you want to make your way across to the right and we're going to do a bit of handiwork here. We want to place in the pink spirit, so the green spirit and then the pink spirit and that's going to give us enough boost to get up to the yellow monitors at the top left. Once you're high enough up, jump up and we want to throw that switch and that is going to affect the boss in the background. Now that that's over, we're going to be able to move over to the right using the rope just here, hop on up, and we want to continue to the right section here. We're going to have a bit of a break from the boss for now, but not for much longer. He will come back. He comes back a total of three times. Drop down and you want to continue to the right for as long as you can. Okay, so once we're in this section, we want to start off by grabbing the pink spirit and moving the block to the left. Once we're down at the bottom, we want to throw in the pink spirit and we're going to rise up and grab the block that is at the top over here. We want to push that down to the floor below. One that is down, we want to then climb over to the other side. Push it to the right, and this is a little bit awkward here for some reason. I'm trying to get the spirit to connect with me uh, as it couldn't seem to do that. So. Then using the block below, float on up and jump up to the one on the right hand side and grab the green spirit. Drop back down and now we're going to need to do a bit of handiwork. So we want the pink spirit to go into the block with the pink spirit slot. You want to send that up in the air and you want to grab the other block and drag it underneath so that it lands on top. Put it so that it's underneath the ledge below and we're going to have to do a bit of fancy footwork here um, to climb on top and then we want to raise the block that is on the top up and out the way so drop in the pink shape and then underneath that you want to drop in the green shape into the block below move out the way and then jump on top of the other block again and use the pink spirit one more time it should give you just about enough height to jump up through the gateway at the top. Once you've done that, you want to make your way to the right. Once you're down, you want to continue to the right and down to the bottom. And we're going to grab the green spirit from the block that is just down here. Now pull that block to the left so that it is underneath the blue ledge next to the two stones. And once you've done that, you want to head to the left hand side and jump up on top of that blue ledge. Place in the pink spirit and stay on this ledge. But immediately when the pink spirit drops out, 
we want to drop down to the below and use the pink spirit on the square block stand on top of it as well to make your life a little bit easier that's going to lift the block up and it's going to then be captured by the ledge that ledge then needs to be moved to the left between the two stones and the green spirit needs to be planted onto the onto the cube then use your pink spirit again on the ledge to exit out via the right hand side So our friend is now back in action. He's rebooted and ready to rumble again. It's the same principle. Stay out of sight when he's doing his big red uh, shock wave thing. So we kick this one off by jumping to the right and we're gonna grab the pink spirit that's on the middle ledge and then jump back again immediately as we're gonna need to place that pink spirit into the green shield. You then need to follow the green shield as far right as you possibly can. And as you're going, it's eventually going to hit a bit of a standstill. The ledge, uh, the shield will get stuck on the doorway that you've just come through. So once you have the opportunity, you're going to need to sprint to the right and you'll be cutting it just fine. You need the pink spirit for this section as well to make sure that you've got it with you. Place the pink spirit into the cube and then using the platforms in the way between you and the boss, navigate to the other side. Okay, so now this section is going to require us a little bit of speed and timing. So jump onto the ladder and we're going to climb up and jump to the right and grab the pink spirit. Once you have the pink spirit, we want to get back onto the ladder and climb down to the shield. Place the pink spirit in the shield and then we're going to want to follow it upwards. So you've got to climb up, jump to the right jump to the left and then up then staying behind the shield you want to jump to the ladder above you and climb all the way up as far as you can be sure to take the pink spirit with you on this part as you'll need it to navigate this section as you come into this bit you need to place the pink spirit into the shield and edge along slowly and you'll need to wait for the pink spirit to come out, but then take cover by the shield which is next to the ladder. Okay, so once you've done that, you want to make your way to the ladder and you want to use the pink spirit on the shield by the ladder and follow it up. Be sure to wait around and grab the pink spirit off of the shield here. Once you've done that, you want to jump over to the green block and we're going to extract the green spirit from it. And then we need to push the block off to the left hand side. If you jump back on top of the block, you will take cover outside, outside of the creature. Okay, so once the block has been pushed off to the left, we want to drop it down and we're going to place the green spirit into the shield and that's going to increase its size and we're going to place in the pink spirit one more time and that's going to make for ease of pushing the green block to the other side make sure you get it behind the shield at the bottom of the ladder and then we want to make sure that we've grabbed back from that shield the green and the pink spirits you can just run back across to the other side once the attack is over you've just enough time to do it so once you have those spirits, go back to the box and we want to push it to the right. You 
You'll then need to enter in the green and the pink spirits to give yourself a bit of a booster up to the next switch. When you're at the next switch you want to throw it to the right and that is switch 2 or 3 that you need for killing the boss. Once you've done that you want to climb up the newly formed rope and exit to the right. Okay, so once you've thrown the lever, just keep going to the right, don't stop going to the right, and I'll regroup with you in the next room. Okay, so in this next section, we want to push over to the right and grab our pink spirit. Once we have that, we want to drag our box to the left underneath the left hand, sorry, next to the lever on the left hand side and under the left ledge. We want to throw that lever. And once we've pulled that, we want to stand on top of the box and place in our triangle. And we're going to float on up and grab our green spirit. Once you're back down, you want to move to the right, and we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to throw the switch so the bridge goes to the left. Drop in your pink, not the green, for some reason I put in the green. Drop in the pink spirit, and that's going to lift you up one more time. We want to grab the blue spirit, which we've not seen for a while, out of the statue on the left hand side. Once you have that, drop down and we're going to move the block to the center just here. And we want to drop in the green, blue, and then pink spirits. And that is going to cause quite a big aurora of light. And then we want to throw the switch so that it gets stuck at the top, but it'll be able to reach both levers at the same time. So once you've done that, you want to exit to the right. In this next section, we want to grab the purple spirit off the top of the ledge and then continue to the right and extract the blue spirit. Make our way across to the ledge and we want to place in the pink spirit. That's going to set the ledge in motion and we will want to push the cube to the right of the first statue. Follow that ledge to the end and we're going to grab the pink spirit from this one. Now we're going to need to place the pink spirit into the cube so that it goes over the top of the ledge. and then place the blue spirit into the block once you have that in we want to place the pink spirit into the ledge and we're going to climb up to the top right now the ledge at the bottom is going to move the cube along to put it in the places that we need it to be at the right time so keep climbing and then when the door opens ahead just push on through And once we're at the end of this section, there's going to be a lever to throw that's going to send us up. We are going to grab memory number four out of four. That is our last collectible of the game. And this is the memories for our friend that we spoke to at the start of the factory, the guiding light. So once you're at the top, jump up to the left and we want to follow it to the left, as you probably gathered. And we'll get to this point where you'll be able to swing across some ropes to get to the other side. Use those ropes to jump across to the memory fragment.
So once that's done, we want to exit right back to the lift that we just came up in. And now onto the toughest section of the game, and I'd say, yeah, we're going to need to move with a lot of speed here. Like I said, do not get killed by the Watcher, because if you get killed by the Watcher, you'll need to start the factory checkpoint again from the very beginning and run it without dying. Okay, so from here, we immediately want to start off running to the right. This time around, his attack does a lot more damage, and it knocks out the ledges. Okay, so head over to the right and immediately grab the pink spirit, and we're going to use that on the ledge that is below us. That's going to send you up, jump to the left and climb up, and we're going to then climb up the ladder on the left hand side. Once you've done that, immediately jump over to the right and drop the pink spirit into the pad just here. Jump to the left and then place the pink spirit into the, black, the pad that is here. Grab the green spirit from the stone. Push the block to the right, then jump on top and use the green spirit on the stone to get bigger. Jump up to the left and grab another green spirit in the process. Move the green cube to the right, and then we want to place the green spirit in this block here to make it bigger. Jump up to the right and grab the pink spirit. Drop down and get the spirit out of the cube. Move that to the left. Then we want to place the pink spirit into this cube and it's going to lift it up very high. Drop to the right and you want to throw the lever and that's going to cause that cube to get stuck. So I cut it very fine. Place in the green and the pink spirits into this cube and it is going to lift you up high enough. And you want to jump to the ladder on the right. And once you climb up this ladder you get a bit of a breather from our friend here. Once you've done that, you want to climb up and you're going to move to the right. And now in this section, do not stop. Just run to the far right as possible. Keep going. Ignore the fact that the boss is coming up. Don't pay attention to the cutscenes. Keep running to the right because there's a lever at the end that you need to pull. If you don't pull this lever in time, he will kill you regardless of wherever you're stood. So keep running. Throw the lever. And that is going to switch off the last boss in the game. If you've not been caught by the Watcher, you'll bag yourself an achievement at this point in time for not being spotted by him. Okay, so this is it. This is the end of the game now. So once that's done, we are going to make our way to the left and we're going to drop down the gap in the floor. That is going to cause us to slide. Then once you're done sliding, you're going to bump into the guiding light at the bottom. And he's going to give you the prompts to exit. The options that you choose here do not affect the achievements or the outcomes of the game. So pick whatever that is necessary to you. You'll then want to continue for the right for as far as you possibly can. So walk over. And then there's going to be a prompt on the screen saying, do you want to auto walk this? You can hold that down. That does not affect the end game outcomes either. So in doing that, once you get to the end of this section, you're going to bag yourself the final achievement for the game, giving you the full 1000 gamer score and all of the trophies that will be available to you. I've been Jastig from the Achievement Squad. If you find this guide useful, drop us a like, comment, subscribe, and happy hunting.
Thank you. 